Aw, oh, look at that cute little Fiat 500. Doesn't it look so adorable? <laughs> Hang on a minute, a Fiat 500 doesn't make that noise. That's right, it doesn't, but that's because this is not a Fiat 500. This is an Abarth 595C Turismo. The C part means this is a convertible or a cabriolet, if you prefer, which is perfect for days like this. Never mind. The Abarth 595 is available with a different choice of power outputs, but because I've got the Turismo model, I have 165 horsepower with 230 newton meters of torque. This is thanks to a 1.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder petrol engine. Power is fed through the front wheels via a five speed manual gearbox, but you can have a five speed automatic if you prefer. Now in regards to performance, if you go for the manual, you'll hit 62 miles per hour in 7.3 seconds and continue to a top speed of 135. Hmm. Not too bad for a car that's about the same size as a rucksack. Okay, the car isn't quite as small as a rucksack, but it isn't exactly what you'd call spacious. But then again, I'm sure you would expect that. However, just for a laugh, let's see if I can fit in the back. Right, this should be interesting, trying to fit all six foot two of me in the back. Okay, um, here goes nothing. I, I feel like I should have stretched. Never mind, it's too late for that. Oh. I'm in. <laughs> right, time to bring my seats back. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I am six foot two. There we go, clicked into place. Wow, I am. I have been sandwiched here. So, <laughs> quite predictably, I've got no leg room and I've got no knee room. Plus, I've got no headroom either. Now, of course, you could put the roof down and I would have headroom, but it is raining at the moment, so probably not a good idea. So obviously the back isn't designed for taller adults, and I would even argue, even for a medium-sized adult, you probably wouldn't want to sit back here. Smaller adults, yeah, you should be okay, and of course for children, it'll be fine, but yes, um, for someone of my height, no, you definitely wouldn't want to sit back here for a long journey, or even a medium journey. Right. I want to get out. Oh. As you would expect, the boot isn't very big. In fact, it's about the same size as a kangaroo's pouch. Okay, I may be exaggerating there, but you get my point. With the capacity of just 185 litres, I'm sure you'll agree it is far from gargantuan. But on the plus side, when you have the roof down, it won't eat into boot space because the roof folds on top of itself above the tailgate, which is quite handy. Now, in case you're wondering, you don't get a spare wheel, but you do get a tyre inflation kit, which is pretty much the industry standard nowadays. Right, that's enough of boring practicality. Let's go for a drive, shall we? It's pretty nippy. However, if you want even more power, you can go for the Competizione because that offers 180 horsepower. But if you want less power, you can go for the standard 595, which has 145 horsepower, or the Trofeo, which has 160. As I mentioned earlier, I have a five-speed manual gearbox and the changes are slick enough. They feel pretty good. But if I'm going to be picky, I would want the changes to be just a little shorter. The throws do feel, in my opinion, just a tad too long. But on the whole, the five-speed manual gearbox is pretty good, and I definitely think this car should have a manual and not the five-speed automatic. Now, let's talk about the power delivery. There is a little bit of lag, 
but as you approach 2,500 revs, you can feel the turbo starting to spool up, and then peak torque comes in at 3,000 revs, and the car goes on boost, and yes, it doesn't hang about. It makes a pretty good noise as well, but it, it is a little bit muted in here, even though I've got a soft top and not a fixed roof. However, you can, of course, put the soft top down and let the exhaust noise enter the cabin, which is very nice indeed, although I can't do it today because, well, the weather. Now, for those of you wondering, this doesn't have the Record Monza exhaust system. That is only standard if you go for the Trofeo or the Competizione. However, I'm sure you'll agree, this exhaust isn't exactly bad in regards to sound. It's pretty fruity. This is a sporty car, therefore you get an equally sporty ride, i.e. firm. Now I say firm, I would actually stick my neck out and say the suspension on the Abarth is hard. I've driven quite a few sporty cars, but yes, this definitely has to be one of the firmest. Down this road, okay, there's quite a few undulations, but I'm jiggling about and it isn't very comfortable. The low speed ride is most definitely lumpy and this car isn't the most comfortable. Although, because the Turismo model is a bit more based on comfort, huh, yeah, um, not, nice try our bath, but you do get, as standard, these very fetching leather seats, which to their credit are comfortable to sit in, but they are perched too high, for my opinion. It feels a bit SUV-esque in here in regards to the height at which I'm sat at. Yes, I'm not a fan of it. As standard, you've got Coney's FSD shocks in the suspension, and FSD stands for Frequency Selective Damping. Basically, in layman's terms, what it means is that the shocks are able to adapt to the driving and the road conditions. So at a high frequency, let's say you're driving on quite a bad road, the shocks will adapt to give you better comfort, and at low frequencies, it will the shocks will adapt um, by giving you better stability and better handling so it will firm things up does the system work mm, uh, jury's out on that one right i think it's about time i talk about handling now if you've seen any of my previous videos i've filmed with a bath cars you'll know that i've described the handling as a little bit one-dimensional and my experience of this car, well, to begin with, was it's quite understeery and it's not too afraid to wash wide when you're really pushing the car. The steering feedback is pretty good though when you put it into sport mode. And out of sport mode, of course, it does feel a little bit light. But yes, there isn't a lot of adjustability in the corners. And if I'm going to be honest and blunt, I was quite underwhelmed by the handling of this car. However, I discovered a button. It's very nondescript and vague, and it simply reads TTC. What that stands for is Torque Transfer Control. Push it and the handling, it changes for the good. Basically, this system acts as a kind of electronic limited slip diff and it gives you better traction in the corners, less torque steer, and it helps to give the car a tighter line. And does it work? Yes, it does. It works pretty well. On the brakes, brakes are good. 
they've got a nice strong feeling to them, the pedal has got a good amount of feedback and the TTC really does in my opinion transform this car's handling. It feels more poised, more balanced, it's tighter and you can take more liberties with it. <laughs> my word that was a uh, pretty fast through there. And if I had the trans if I had the torque transfer control off, I would have ended up in a bush. So that is good engineering. But what I find annoying about that button, that function, is it doesn't come on automatically when you put the car into sport mode. I'm afraid that is just the start of a few things I don't like about this car. So here's a quick whistle stop tour. As I mentioned, the seat is perched too high and the steering wheel only adjusts for rake and not reach. So even with the steering wheel set to its highest and my seat set to its lowest, for my height, I'm 6'2", I still cannot find a comfortable driving position. You can't access the end of the door bins when you have the door closed thanks to the design and also the bolstering of the seats, which can be quite annoying if an item slides through the back of the door bin. It means you can't get to it whilst you're driving. The footrest in the driver's footwell is only usable if you have dainty feet like a ballerina. Not for me, I've got size 11 feet. When you have the gear lever in first, third or fifth, it does kind of block your access to the climate control functions and also the TTC button, which is quite annoying. The dashboard squeaks as you drive along, which points to poor quality. The lever for the height adjustment for the driver's seat is right next to the handbrake, which I think is quite silly. Quite possibly the result of this car being converted from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. And last but not least, the touchscreen is unbearably laggy at points. Oh, sort it out a bath. There's also another issue. This car, despite its size, does command quite a large price tag. Its starting price is approaching £21,000, but this particular car does have a few options. So you have the podium blue paintwork, which will cost you £500. I've also got the larger 7-inch touchscreen with navigation supplied by TomTom. That will cost you £750. I've also got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That will cost you £150. So this car you're looking at is over £22,000. Hmm, that is quite a lot of money. But what do you get as standard? Well, you get a bath styling, leather seats, 17 inch alloys, double exhaust pipes, five inch Uconnect system with DAB radio and Bluetooth, seven inch digital driver's display, dual design climate control and rear parking sensors. Now let's talk about fuel economy. I know, I know that's not the most exciting thing to talk about and there's a good chance you don't really care given the type of car it is. But on a combined run, using the new WLTP method, this car is able to give me 37.2 mpg. If you go for the hatchback version, that rises to 38.2 mpg. In my experience, I've been getting around 40 mpg. So that's pretty good considering the type of car this is. However, I wasn't driving the car particularly hard. Once you mash your right foot into the carpet, that figure will of course fall. So at this moment in time, well, I have hooned this car about a bit, but even so, my MPG has only fallen down to 35. So that's pretty respectable. So I'm not too sure why I went so high pitch on it. It's pretty respectable. In regards to CO2 emissions, this car emits 155 grams per kilometer, meaning for the first year of VED, you will be required to pay £515. So it's clear to see that this isn't the greenest car in this part of the market. Now this car is far from perfect, but when you drive it on roads like this, with that noise behind you, I don't think you'll care. Oh, I've got a low fuel warning. But you know what? I don't care. I'm having too much fun. This car is not perfect. It is, in my opinion, too expensive for what it is. It's not the best handling car in its class, but <laughs> when you get it on a road like this, oh, bit of understeer there, even with the torque transfer control on. But yes, when you get it on a road like this, that won't matter because it is a fun car and it's got bags of character. I would argue pound for pound, this car's got the most character in its class. 
And I think that's why the Abarth has grown such a strong following and such a loyal fan base. Typical, just as I finish, I've got blue skies and the sun is out. Thank you very much, Mother Nature. Anyway, the day is ending and so is this video. So to summarize the Bath 595C Turismo, well, it's, it is a fun car and it has got bags of character, but it isn't without its flaws. And sometimes it can be frustrating as it is fun. I think also for the amount of car you're getting, it is quite a pricey car on the market but this car has got a huge following and I can definitely see why it's got to appeal. It's kind of like having a puppy. Every now and then it's gonna dump on your carpet and it will ruin your shoes, but it will give you that look and you'll fall in love and you'll think, you know what? None of that really matters. This car won't be for everyone, but it is full of charm, full of character and full of fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If so, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more car obsession. Right, time to get this cleaned. It is filthy.